Hi, I'm Marcy, and in this video, I am going to teach you how to paint with coffee. Well, not really. I'm going to teach you everything I know about the tricks and tips to be able to do this. These are pattern papers that we're going to have in this second part of the series, since I'm going to have different videos about it. But first, let's learn what coffee does, how to activate it, how to get different shapes, how to just make it our best medium yet. So for the materials, you're going to need this sort of round brushes. You can use the flat brushes too. I normally use these, but you're going to see me show you how to use the flat ones. And these need to be soft. The important for the brushes is that they're watercolor brushes so that they hold more water in and the little bristles are soft. You're also going to need some sort of containers. I'm using three little plastic cups here for three different shades but you're also going to need one for water. Then moving on to paper, it's better if you use watercolor paper or mixed media paper, some sort of thickness it's really good. I buy this big one and chop it into little pieces. I am going to leave the um, information down below for what I use in case you want to buy it. But um, you can also buy something like this with a coupon at Hobby Lobby or Michaels or any craft stores. So let's get started. You're also going to need a little towel or napkin and some instant coffee. I love to use this Nescafe one that um, I bought at my local grocery store, a spoon, and here you go, your little cups. The water one and three for at least three shades. You can use four or five, it depends on you. I like to use three and play with those. I even use the little water um, that I rinse my brushes in to paint with. That's a very, very light um, coffee stain or coffee value. Um, but there you go. This one's going to be thick and you saw how much coffee and how much water I put into it. So this one's a little bit of a thick consistency. Then you're going to um, add water as you feel like it needs it. Um, the second shade has less coffee and more water. So it's a little bit more watery as you can see here. And our lightest is the one with really little coffee and a lot more water. So there you go. You have three shades and I'm going to show you um, them. You have to test it. Here's what I meant about the bristles. They need to be soft. So um, you're going to test them before you start painting. And you see this one, it's really light. You can barely see it. And you can also apply more um, as you go to make it a little bit darker because as soon as you put another, like it's dry and then you put another coat on it, um, it gets reactivated like it's it this is not good for layering if you're looking for, to layer like with watercolors coffee does not do that it automatically reactivates the um, coffee that you painted with before so you see three different shades here and I'm gonna teach you some tips and tricks on what you do um, there's also like a coffee paste that you can make this is like very very little water and basically you're making kind of like a little pasty um, coffee shade here. This is more for details, like really um, small details. But as soon as you make this, you have to use it because otherwise the water will evaporate and you end up with no paint, just a, you know, coffee stain dried into your um, paper. So um, here I'm gonna show you that you can, you know, have more control with this. Um, since it's so thick but you can also make you know um, there's a little bit more water soluble just by adding water and you have an instant shade there another trick water and a paper towel it's basically an eraser so you're gonna see me here use a clean brush and just touching the coffee kind of reactivating it because it was already dry and I'm making circles you can see them here but you can barely see them I mean you can see them but not that much but as soon as they get wet and you put a paper towel on top of it, magic. Paper, like the paper just absorbs it and the color disappears. So 
you don't need to make circles if you make a mistake you can you know just erase it with, like this or you can actually add some details to your paintings so here I'm just doing some wiggly lines kind of like waves and as soon as you put the paper towel there boom the color is gone you have some reverse painting you can say so this is what coffee does it holds the shape well if you have water and you make kind of like boundary just not wetting the rest of the paper you can just hold it there it holds its shape if you paint a circle a triangle whatever it does it holds it but it also bleeds into values look at this boom and that cool you can make planets you can make funky art you can do whatever you like just by dropping a little bit of a uh, darker you know coffee value into a lighter and it also mixes well like if you have something that is light and you want to make it darker by just using a little bit of the dark one you can mix it well and make another um, kind of value but see it's not good for layering layering it's not its thing I mean, if you do it really lightly, maybe you can get a little bit of layer, but it reactivates the coffee in the back and it's hard to get any details like that. So, moving on. The paste is good for all the details, like I said before, but you can actually use it for like, let's say you're painting an eye and you want to get the little details inside the eyeball. This, are, this, this is good for it, but it dries quickly. So, um, you can also reactivate it, add in more water, that's obviously, and I'm going to show you that, but you have more control over what you do. So, here I'm just doing some strokes with a very thin brush, and the more pressure I add, the more color you're going to see. You're going to see me pressure and pressure a little bit more, and you see I get thicker lines, but I do have the control over this, not the coffee running everywhere. Now you've seen this little kind of composition I made here and this is because it's thick paper it doesn't absorb water as fast but if you use some kind of coloring page you can see the lines from the other side you have less control over whatever shade you're painting because this paper absorbs the water so fast you have like no ability to move it in the paper whatsoever you have to keep getting more and more coffee and more and more coffee so you're gonna end up with like brown blob with like no control or no shading basically a flat kind of camel in this case <laughs> so here it's what um i will ask you to do get your coffee and start doing something easy i am lately into rainbows and i love them and i know they're not colorful but they're fun rainbows okay earth tone we'll call them whatever you want bohemian i like them and I like to leave a space in between each layer because that white space is also important. So, um, see I'm kind of painting with my paint water too. Anyhow, this is what it looks like when you have more control. Obviously I'm doing this fast, um, besides this, you know, spit up for the video, but, um, you can see different shades right here out of those three. Plus the paste, obviously. Here it is. It's dry reactivate it just at water that is the fun part about coffee you can leave it out and it will dry out and then you can reactivate it I have left my coffee for about a week a week and a half and I've gotten no mold or n no ants or no anything you know to it like animal wise crawling into there or anything so I do recommend if you're gonna use it you can cover it Anyhow, now we're going to move into painting and I'm going to show you how to use the techniques we just learned and what we learned about coffee. This is going to be a simple painting. This is one of the flat brushes I was talking to you about at the beginning. You can also use them as long as they hold water. You can see how long I can go without recharging that brush. And I'm just dabbing it into the, um, the paper. The harder you dab, the more color you're going to get out. The lighter you do it, the thinner, more controlled lines you're going to get. I like a mix of both of them because I like contrast. 
And now for the light color you saw, I dipped it twice and then I moved on to the other um, shade. I'm leaving some white space in between because if you don't then it's going to look pretty flat and you don't want that. Um, unless you're going for a flat look, but I don't think anyone is going for that lady. And this is not going to be a Picasso or anything fancy or, you know, super um, professional. This is just to show you what you can create using the little tips and tricks I just showed you. So you're making lines, thick, thin ones. This is going to be the trunk of a palm tree or the um, palm tree yeah, that's what you call it, the trunk or the, the wood part of it. Oh god, I can barely talk. Sorry about the noise, I was plugging in the computer because I'm running out of battery. But, let's ignore that and keep working on the leaves. This is going to be non-realistic, obviously. This is going to, this is kind of inspired from the uh, movie uh, Bayana or Moana in some other places. Um, they have some this kind of cool art going on kind of like you know primitive and I don't know what to describe it but it was just really cool so I just watched the movie with my kids for like the 13th time and I'm like yep today's the day I'm gonna be inspired and paint something you know kind of like the movie style so it's beachy because I love the beach and it's also fun and easy for any beginner or anyone. My kids do this with me. Obviously, they are impatient because they're kids and they want it to dry and to be ready like with two brush strokes. But they do have fun making their own little animals and whatnot creations from their imagination. So, anyhow. So you see I'm applying a little bit of thicker and I made a mistake here, no problem. You use the paper towel, you wipe it away, and you keep going. And then I'm adding some more details with the thicker coffee and now I'm using the water to get some coffee out of the coffee that I already painted and that it was dry. So you can see I'm just adding dots here and making it fun, skipping one and doing it in the other one. So every other little mark I'm making the dots and it's giving it some sort of like cool texture, cool vibe to it. Kind of bohemian. Anyhow. So you can use this to add light um, to paintings. You can just delete mistakes like this. You can add details like I'm doing to the leaves so that we have dark um, areas and you know areas where it looks like the light is hitting it. Um, I'm not gonna go into details about shades and you know shadows and light sources or anything like that. Um, maybe we can deal with that in another video, but for now, I hope you like what you learn and make your own little drawings. For um, this series, it's going to be four or five episodes long. This is just the beginning part of it. In the next one, I'm going to show you how to make your own pattern paper. But this time, it's not using the techniques like in my other two videos that I've shown. I'll link them, those below. Those are pattern paper using techniques and things you have around your house. These pattern papers that I'm going to share with you are going to be painting on paper. So. Um, this is what our final little project looks like and this is what the pattern papers look like for the next video and you saw me paint a little bit of these at the beginning these are different techniques brushing splashing uh painting and doing you know basic shapes and controlling your brush strokes and the pressure you apply to them so if you're interested subscribe hit the notification bell and you won't miss video you won't miss it and you'll have the entire series for you to play with your coffee this is really affordable and fun to do not only for you but for your family or your kids so come and play along and subscribe thank you guys have an amazing day bye <laughs>